In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily burn pictures or designs into wood with the help of your Cricut cutting machine. And in the process, we're also making a super cute and personalized tray for Santa snacks. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your Cricut and crafting channel where I post Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to use your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications so that you never have to miss out on a single Cricut Minute, especially during December, because during December, I am doing the 12 days of Craftmas around here, where I'm putting out 12 different episodes that are Christmas or holiday themed and that are also using, of course, my Cricut cutting machine. Now, not only that, but each episode is another chance for you to get registered to win a huge Cricut prize package and that includes a Cricut maker as well as a Cricut Joy with the hopes that you will pay it forward and give away one of those to a friend or a family member. Now to the fun part because to get registered there is a hidden holiday or Christmas themed phrase inside of each of these Craftmas videos and to find them you basically have to watch the videos from the very beginning all the way up until the very end because these phrases are popping up one word at a time throughout the course of the video. So whenever you see a word pop up, just jot it down. And at the very end of the video, text that phrase into me. If you're living inside the US anyway, text that phrase into me at 502-878-7189. If you are outside of the US, then just email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. And you can submit those anywhere between now and all the way up until 11.59 PM Pacific Standard Time on Christmas Day. All right, so now on to today's project, and I am so excited for this because y'all, I just love doing this project. I've actually done two videos on this so far, one on my channel and the other on the Design Bundles YouTube channel. So for this episode, I'm doing a slightly updated version of that project. But first things first, we're obviously gonna need a few things to make this Cricut Christmas magic happen. The first being obviously a cutting machine. And y'all know I love my Cricut. I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker right here. However, you can do this with any type of cutting machine as long as that cutting machine can work with SVG cut files. You're also gonna need some vinyl, some permanent adhesive vinyl like this right here to make a stencil with. Um, I have tried this out with different methods, like a, even a stencil film vinyl, and I have personally found for this particular style of project, a permanent adhesive vinyl seems to work out the best. You're also gonna need a wood surface, right? And I am using this cutting board right here from Ikea. Now. This is pretty important. The wood that you're using cannot be sealed. It cannot be waxed. Basically the the solution that we're gonna be applying to this, that's actually gonna cause the wood to burn. It has to come in contact with the wood fibers or it's not gonna work. Now you can do a light stain over top of your wood surface if you'd like to, and that seems to work out pretty good actually. However, like a thick coat of paint is not gonna do the job. Like it's actually gonna cover up too much of the wood grain and it's not gonna work, unfortunately. We're also gonna need a food or beverage thickener like this thicket right here. Now, so many people have asked me if cornstarch will work and cornstarch is actually one of the ingredients in this. I feel like cornstarch will work. I think it will do the job. I just personally have not tried it yet. So if you decide to try it, let me know down in the comment section below. But where this actually comes in hand is actually thickening up the solution that we're gonna be creating with ammonium chloride. And here is the ammonium chloride right here. Now this stuff is great. It is actually used in some places as an ingredient in candy from what I read somewhere. It's a relatively safe ingredient or a relatively safe chemical if you wanna call it that. However, whenever it's applied to a wood surface like we're doing today and actually heated up with a heat gun, which is next up on our list, I'll be using this heat gun right here. Now it does not have to be this exact heat gun that you use. However, this one does get up to 495 degrees Celsius. So as long as your heat gun can get somewhere in that general vicinity, it should be able to work out just fine. Oh, and by the way, a hair dryer will not work. It just simply does not get hot enough. However, back to what I was saying, once we actually heat up the solution that we create with the ammonium chloride, it's actually gonna cause this reaction on the wood grain. And it's actually gonna burn our design into the wood grain. It's so, so cool. 
cool. If you have not yet seen this, you're gonna love it. It's just, it's amazing. And last but not least, we're also gonna need our SVG cut file. So I'm gonna hop over to designbundles.net and I'll show you the exact one that I'm using. And y'all, is this SVG bundle not the absolute cutest? Like I am obsessed. So let's just take a look through these real, real quick. I absolutely love these so, so much. And I love that they've created this tray template that you can use for rectangular trays as well as circular trays, just like this one right here. Now this SVG file right here at the top left hand corner, this is actually the one that I'll be using for today's project. So let's hop over to Cricut Design Space and let's make some magic happen. All right, so here is our image right here on the Cricut Design Space canvas. Now, if you're not entirely sure how to go about downloading files from designbundles.net and how to actually get those uploaded into Cricut Design Space, no worries. I have a video showing you exactly how to do that as well as fonts. I will link that video for you right up here as well as down in that description box below. But let's go ahead and actually resize this. I'm actually gonna grab this little resize handle right here and then just drag it outwards just so we can get a better look at it so far. And there we go. So. First things first, what I'm noticing is that over here on the right hand side of the page in this layers panel, there is a bunch of different layers going on. And especially since we're gonna be using this as a stencil, we don't need all of this. So since this is already all selected, I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And weld is basically fusing or merging all of those layers into one solid layer, or in this case, like one solid image, so to speak. So here is our, our stencil. Now, here's one thing that we do need to add. And right here, it says love and you can put in a kid's name or grandkids names or family's last name or however you want to do it. Um, I'm actually going to come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on text and I think I want to make this for my nephew. So I'm going to type in here Hayden and there we go. Now I'm not loving the style of this font so I'm going to come up here towards the top left hand corner right up here where it says font this little drop down menu. Now I'm gonna come right over here and select system because system is the system fonts. It's the fonts that you already own and that are already downloaded to your computer. So I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna do a search for Christmas. And I'm looking for Christmas blessings, which is right here. Now I did get this font from fontbundles.net. So if you wanna check that out, I will leave a link for that down in that description box below as well. But as far as like the way that this font is actually um, kind of spread out. There's all these little gaps between each letter. That is one of the biggest pet peeves I have about uh, fonts with Cricut Design Space. Now the way to fix that, in my opinion, the best way to fix that is just by coming up here towards the top right hand corner while that font or while that word is selected. And I'm gonna select ungroup. And whenever you do that, it's basically ungrouping each of those letters onto its own layer. So you could really just grab each letter, move it anywhere you want on the canvas. You could resize it individually. You could rotate it. You could really do any of that. But I'm actually just gonna scoot this in a little bit closer so it's actually connecting with the other letters. Now you could just use like the letter spacing tool that's already built into Cricut Design Space, but that's so hit or miss. Sometimes it works out great and sometimes it doesn't. And to me, this is just way more reliable. There we go. So now that we have that all connected, since it is a script font and since those letters are like overlapping each other, I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of these and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And I can go ahead and just grab this little resize handle, drag that outwards like so. Maybe we uh, rotate it just a hair. And this line right here is kind of getting in the way. So let me actually just select our design and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select contour. And contour is a really great tool that we can actually use to basically remove different parts of an image and maybe customize them just a little bit more. So as you can see here, here is our image like all laid out and everything is kind of like a darker gray color. However, if I select this little line right here, it's gonna turn into like a lighter gray, which means that it has been removed from our image. So if we select anywhere outside of this little high contour box, it's now removed from our image. Pretty cool, right? All right, so I'm really liking how that's looking. I think that looks great. So let me go ahead and click and drag over our, over our name, over Hayden and over this design. And then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and we're just gonna go ahead and weld it all together. So it's one solid image, one solid design. So now what we need to do is actually just resize this to fit onto our cutting board or tray or whatever you're wanting to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that now. Let me just throw in here one more thing about the wood that you pick out. Whatever you pick out, if it's not completely smooth to the touch, if it has any kind of texture or tooth to it, you really wanna sand this down with like a 220 fine grit sandpaper, just until it's extremely, extremely smooth to the touch. Otherwise, you really run the risk of your design bleeding out into other areas of your, of your wood. And trust me, I've been there and done that way too many times to count, and you do not want that to happen to you. 
But as far as measuring this for our template, so to speak, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and start the measurement right here, below the little hole right here in our cutting board. So from here to here, and from here to here. Basically, I don't want my design to be going past this little hole right here in the cutting board. All right, so we're looking at right at 15 inches for the width. And as for the height in this situation, it is right at 10 and three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna plug those numbers into Cricut Design Space in the form of a template, and we'll go from there. So for that template, I'm coming over here to the left-hand side of the page and clicking on Shapes, and I'm gonna open up a square. There we go. And if you wanna change the color, just to represent the color of the cutting board, you can, you don't have to, but that's super easy to do by clicking this little, this little color swatch up here and then just changing that to brown. But let me come over here to where it says size. And the first thing I wanna do is unlock this little padlock so that I can have a different measurement for the width and the height. And for that width, we said 15 inches. So I'm putting in here 15 and hit enter for 15 inches. And for that height, we said 10 and three quarters of an inch. So I'm putting in here 10.75, hit enter, and there we go. And I can right click our template here and then select send to back. There we go. All right, so now I know exactly how big I can make my design without it being too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this little resize handle right here and then just drag this outwards, just like so. All right, so I mean, that's actually pretty perfect. So I can go ahead and grab our, our template here and then go ahead and just delete that out. And then I can come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. All right, so here's the thing. The cutting board that I'm using is a tad on the larger side. And because of that, for the, the design to be as big as I want it to be on the cutting board, no, well, it also needs to be on the larger side. Because of that, I'm gonna have to actually use a larger cutting mat. Now, I have done videos in the past where I've actually sliced the images where you can actually create a larger than mat surface essentially. However, I do not want to do that whenever it comes to doing a stencil because there's too much risk of your design bleeding underneath of the stencil or underneath of the vinyl in this case, whenever you're trying to match up two pieces of a stencil together. It's just to me, it's, it's just not worth it. So if you don't have a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat, then you may want to do a smaller design. And since this is going to be a stencil, I'm actually going to just click and drag our design right here on this mat preview screen just right here away from the edges of this cutting mat, just so we have a little bit more of a margin around our stencil. All right, so I'm gonna now come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. All right, so for our base material cut settings, so I am gonna be using the StarCraft HD Permanent Adhesive Vinyl. This stuff is my favorite, it has quickly become my go-to, and to me, there's just not another permanent adhesive vinyl out there that is this level of quality, and that also cuts and weeds so easily, and not to mention it's so, so, so affordable. Like a five foot roll of this stuff, a five foot roll is $2.85. That's bonkers, you guys. Like I'm not about to call any company out, but just try to go to a retail store and try to buy a five foot roll of a permanent adhesive vinyl that is $2.85. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> not unless it is just severely, severely clearanced. But for this, for my cut setting for the StarCraft HD, I'm actually gonna come over here and select Browse All Materials. And if you are using a Cricut Explorer, just turn your dial over to Custom and then all this should pop up for you. And per usual, I'm gonna do a search for Premium. And I'm gonna select the Premium Vinyl setting right there. And as always, remember, if you're using a brand new type of material, always, always, always do test cuts first. A small test cut, bring a star or other shape onto your canvas, resize it down to half an inch, and then proceed to actually go through and cut it out and weed it out and make sure that it cut properly before you commit to doing a large design like this. All right, so now for our solution or mixture or um, concoction that's gonna make all of this Cricut Christmas magic happen. We're obviously gonna need a few ingredients. And like I said before, I am gonna be using this thicket right here. However, there are other options that work because I know that this, this jug right here was like close to $20. Now I do think that any food or beverage thickener should do the exact same thing. And I'm really, really curious to see if cornstarch works. So if anyone wants to try that out and report back to me, I would love to hear it. Now in the past on my videos, I've always said around five to six teaspoons of the thicket right here. However, I'm gonna do around eight. And I've recently been trying this out and it seems like it works even better. So I'm just going forward, you guys.
And we're also going to use one tablespoon of this ammonium chloride right here. Now, I have been asked so many times if this is all food safe. And here's the thing, if you are applying it to a natural wood surface like I am today, like with my cutting board, then absolutely yes, because here's the thing, this ammonium chloride, it's actually gonna burn into the wood itself. You're gonna wash off that wood, so any remaining residue of that ammonium chloride is gonna be washed away and gone, and it will absolutely be food safe. However, if you are using another type of stain or anything else in addition to this, then that opens up a whole nother can of worms and then you just need to do your research to see if whatever you're using is food safe. But as far as this being applied to like a natural wood like we're using, then absolutely. And then last, but definitely not least, we're gonna need half a cup of warm water. You just wanna give this a really, really good stir and then let it sit for a good little while before you actually use it. You wanna let it sit for at least a good 10 minutes or so so it can really absorb all that water and become like this thick gel-like texture. All right, so to prevent any damage from happening to our material, what I like to do instead of peeling my material or in this case vinyl off my mat directly, I like to flip my mat over and peel my mat away from the vinyl or material. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my scissors and then trim off the excess part of vinyl that doesn't have any designs cut out onto it. And we can save that for future projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pin pin weeding tool, which is this little guy right here. Literally, I don't think I could weed out anything without this. <laughs> it's that good. All right, so whenever we're weeding out vinyl that we're gonna be using as a stencil, you kind of have to think in reverse. So basically you have to weed out everything that you would normally leave behind. It's kind of trippy at first, but you'll get the hang of it real quick, I promise. All right, so here is our design all weeded out. So now what I'm gonna do is just grab some transfer tape. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but you're gonna need some transfer tape. And this is my all time favorite. This is the medium tech transfer tape. This stuff might as well be witchcraft because I don't know how they made it, but it's perfect, like perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna leave my transfer tape sitting out on my desk with the sticky side facing up. And I'm actually gonna flip my design like so and apply this face down onto the transfer tape. And I'm gonna grab my little squeegee tool right here and then just burnish this really good down to the transfer tape. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this all over and then peel the backing paper away from the vinyl. All right, and now I'm going to very carefully apply this down to our cutting board. And I'm yet again grabbing my squeegee tool and I'm just gonna burnish this down really good to the wooden cutting board. And now very carefully, I'm gonna start pulling the transfer tape off, making sure that none of the vinyl is wanting to come back up with it. I find that if you try to pull the transfer tape back as close down to the surface as possible, it really helps make sure that any of that vinyl sticks down to the surface. All right, so now that that is all applied down to our surface, I am gonna grab our solution right here, which at this point should be pretty thickened up and, and it is. <laughs> so if you can see that here, very goopy, but you really wanna just kinda of wipe off any of the excess um, solution or, or gel onto the side of the bowl, not leaving a lot on your brush, and then just kind of very, very lightly going across the entire surface. All right, so now that we've applied a very thin coat of our gel ammonium chloride solution, we are now gonna let this completely dry. And once it is completely dry, we will very carefully remove all of the vinyl from the surface. Then we'll take this outside, and that is very important to take this outside. It doesn't seem like a lot of smoke is gonna be coming off of this, but apparently it's enough to set off every fire alarm in my house. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but we will definitely be taking this outside and then applying our heat gun out there to this. 
So whenever you're applying your heat gun to your wooden surface, you really want to make sure that you keep that heat gun just constantly moving back and forth, up and down, side to side, every which way. And the reason you want to do that is because if you hold your heat gun in one spot for too long, it can really start to burn the wood that's even around where our ammonium chloride solution is. And that's just, that's just no bueno, no good. We do not want that. Another thing that is really cool about this entire process is just how customizable it is, even as you're holding heat to your surface. The longer that you hit your design with the heat, the darker that it will turn. You could go completely black with this, or if you want more of like a worn, rustic kind of country vibe, you could do that as well. Now, if you all liked today's episode or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me and help me out so much here on YouTube. If you went ahead and stamp to that like button as well as drop a comment down in that comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out how to use this daggone Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut minute especially during December, because like I said earlier, during December is the 12 days of Craftmas around here on this channel. So at this point in the video, you should have the entire holiday or Christmas themed phrase. So if you are in the US, go ahead and text that into me at 502-878-7189. If you are outside of the US, then email it to me at mcpgiveaways at gmail.com. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching today's episode. It truly, truly, truly means the world to me. And until next time, stay crafty.